Dr. Graham, what would you respond to that? How would you respond to that? Well, I would say that most Americans uh, believe that we're so far in debt that their children's future is at risk. And if we're going to raise the debt ceiling, we're already borrowed 40 cents of every dollar. For every dollar that we borrow in the future, we're going to cut the government by an equivalent dollar is not radical. It's something we should have been doing a long time ago. And there's not a snowball's chance in hell that we're going to get out of debt, reform entitlements, and control spending without presidential leadership. So what Boehner proposed about raising the debt ceiling is just a start. I'm not going to vote to raise the debt ceiling until you show me we're serious about getting out of debt. And the gang of six, <clears throat> Bowl Simpson hats off. If I were President Obama or candidate Romney, I would tell the public we're going to take Bowl Simpson. That will be our roadmap for the future. If you like to change it, you'll have a chance. But we're going to take that up. We're going to control federal spending. Uh, we're going to flatten the tax code and get new revenue by eliminating deductions. And we're going to have entitlement reform. And it's going to take a presidential leader to make that happen. Senator Warner, you're a part of that so-called gang of six. Some people call it a gang of eight uh, that have been looking for <laughs> some way uh, out of this thing. Uh, what do you do? You think there's still any chance that you all could come up with something that? that Absolutely, Bob. I mean, we're actually up to 45 senators. Lindsay has been a. Uh, uh, suggesting and helpful as well and we've over 100 members of the house I think you know we know that it's going to require reform of the tax code that's going to generate additional revenue it's going to require changing our entitlement program so there will be a Medicare and Social Security 40 50 years from now it's going to require putting some defense spending cuts on the table as as Simpson Bowles laid out and we're still at work at this and uh, what we're going to need and whether this moment comes in the lame duck session or the first quarter of next year <clears throat> it's going to require all of us kind of shoulder to the wheel and being willing to kind of take off our democrat and republican hats and put our country first do you think anything could actually happen before the election senator graham uh not Honestly. really uh, the president no i really don't bob the president's last three budgets have gotten zero votes, and our Democratic colleagues haven't, haven't voted for a budget since April 2009, so I don't see a breakthrough. But in the lame duck, we'll have an opportunity to take the gang of six ideas, Simpson Bowles. But for the campaign itself, I think both candidates for president should be asked, would you take Simpson Bowles as a uh, roadmap to fiscal sanity and pledge to try to implement parts of it and bring it to the uh, Congress for a vote. I, I, I would love to hear both of them say yes. You know, President Obama's had three and a half years to change things. He had two years with super Democratic majorities, uh, and they did basically nothing but run up the debt. So I don't see much happening. What about that, Senator Warner? Well, I think it would be great, but we've already seen President Obama came out when the Gang of Six laid out their ideas, and he said, yeah, he went on TV and <clears> said he'd support them. That probably cost us some votes uh, amongst Republicans in the House. <laughs> what, we're, what I'm concerned about is, Mitt Romney's position, which during the Republican presidential nominating process, where he said he wouldn't even take a deal that had $10 in cuts for $1 in new revenues. Reaffirming that position drives us right into the fiscal ditch. You know, uh, Dan Balds had an interesting piece uh, in mm -hmm. the Washington Post mm -hmm. this morning where he said there are a lot of big issues on the table, but he said the biggest issue is not being addressed, and that is simply this. Can Washington actually govern? I think it's a very fair question and a pertinent question. What's gone wrong, Senator Warner? Well, I do think this issue around debt and deficit has become a proxy for whether our institutions can still function. Mm -hmm. Because we're not going to get to any other issue until we can, in effect, figure out what our balance sheet looks like, what's our long-term tax code going to look like, what's our entitlement uh, programs going to look like. And I think that there is a real sense amongst most members we've got to get it fixed. And I think there's actually a, a lot of common ground. There is no institutional support, though, in Washington for people to do the right thing. Matter of fact, all of the interest groups are very much opposed because it's going to mean changes to the tax code. It's going to mean changes to the entitlement programs. And we need to make it safer, particularly for some of the folks who've been there a long time, to step up and uh, uh, put country first. I would guess you would agree with most of that, Senator Graham. But how did we get to that point? How did we get to where we are right now? Well, we had a new president in 2008 that ran on hope and change, and he had a real opportunity for two years with super Democratic majorities to do what Mark said, control federal spending, reform the tax code, 
and do something about entitlements, and here we are in this election, nothing's happened but more debt, more spending, and out of control entitlement spending. Here's what I would say is good news. Republicans have crossed the Rubicon on revenue. We don't have enough money in Washington. We're historically low in terms of revenue collected, but nobody wants to increase taxes. What Mark and the, gang and the Simpson Bowles Committee did said flatten the tax code, get rid of all deductions but to take most of the money to buy down rates so we'll have an entrepreneurial economy and put some of the money on debt. Republicans have said in the past all the money from eliminating the deduction must go uh, to uh, reducing taxes. Now there's a group of us that say that if you take $4 billion away from the ethanol producers, because that's unfair, put a billion dollars on the debt and $3 billion to lower taxes, that's something that will lead to a breakthrough. And I hope Governor Romney will embrace the concept of reducing deductions and exemptions and putting some of the money on the debt as well as lowering rates. That would be a breakthrough for our party. All right.